Um, we're going to now have a very brief, I'm down to five minutes now, that's tough for me, um, session on integration for impact, which is a nice follow-on from what we were just talking about. In fact, we've sort of got ahead of ourselves in terms of topics. So this will, you'll have another bite of the cherry with another panel just now to come. So hopefully we'll have some good follow-on from that earlier discussion. We're back to our original diagram. It's a very useful diagram, I might add. Um, pretty much summarizes the rest of the year for us. Um, that circle that I've outlined in yellow, that's where everything's coming together in the what we call IFI or Integration for Impact program of work um, with a bit more targeted aim within synthesis around um, aiming to lead change and drive action through knowledge generated by sustainable seas. And we've, um, you guys are also helping during this conference help us refine and tailor this work to ensure, again, that we're maximizing impact um, and doing our work the right way. We've, we've structured the integration for impact work according to three components. Uh, one is um, led by Linda Faulkner um, called Waka Torua. You would have heard a lot about that in yesterday's sessions. Um, and this is, a, I feel, a very exciting um, component of our work in sustainable seas and is really what's going to be there to create momentum, um, communicate what the challenge has been about to New Zealand and the world. Um, so again, this is, a, and I really don't want to talk too much about it because Linda's the one that really should be up here talking to it. Um, so hopefully, um, yeah, so that's, that's really about charting, charting the way really and making, because we've developed so much knowledge in the challenge in breadth and depth and so it's, it's creating that navigational chart, if you will, to help people access that knowledge, um, to help enable EBM and so forth moving forward. The one I'd like to focus on um, with, with the remaining time in this session is the second component, which um, you all have participated in as well. We've had a space downstairs where you've been able to add some thoughts around some of the key topics that we're thinking about in terms of synthesizing our knowledge um, and delivering recommendations to those who can use it and action those recommendations. Um, yeah, so, those, so basically we've come up with, and this is through a lot of engagement, again, with stakeholders and EWE partners, a list of potential topics, and those were listed on those um, poster boards downstairs. I took a photograph this morning and I had a photograph on the bottom, so I was, I'm pleased to say there are some post-its on there now. I had to precede it with a few of my own, but it seemed to have, have worked. So thank you very much for those that did participate in that. Um, that's critical information and important. Um, so we've, we've come up with a list of eight. We can't do everything in this challenge. And in fact, um, I could see us potentially narrowing it or at least refining some of these a bit more with your feedback. Um, we are going to invite up um, three individuals to talk to three of these um, key topics, um, including um, I think we have Conrad Pilditch, who's going to come up shortly. I'm going to ask Conrad to go first. He's going to be talking to the one around cumulative effects. Um, and then we're going to have Karen Fisher come up. And she'll be talking to the one, I believe, around um, enabling EBM within existing legislative frameworks. I might be wrong there. but um, And then we're going to have um, Linda Faulkner come up. Did I get that right, Linda? OK. Well, we have, so they're going to each explain these topics for about five minutes or so. Um, and then we're going to have a panel session with, with them as well on the stage. And we'll have a bit of Q&A around that work that we're proposing. Sound good? So if Conrad, is Conrad there? Awesome.